Hey guys, Has here at Shield Canine, and today we are going to be showing you how to do loose leash walking. Loose leash walking is one of those fundamental behaviors that has a direct impact on your dog's overall demeanor on walks and also in the home. This is one of those behaviors that constantly eludes a lot of dog owners and people struggle with this behavior for the lifetime of their dog. Constantly being pulled around, constantly having a dog that drags them around whenever he becomes distracted. This is something that really can make a walk very unpleasant. There are thousands of videos on YouTube that purport to help you with this problem, but unfortunately the vast majority of them are containing only nonsense that will not really help you with this issue that a lot of people struggle with. Everything from leash pressure and food, halties, and swinging your leg across the dog, these are band-aid solutions and they may work um, temporarily when the dog is not distracted and when you're not out in public. But if you ever take that same dog that these people show in the videos into a public place, which you will never see them do, you will often see that dog go right back to that pulling behavior. So if you want to truly solve this behavioral problem, you need to follow this very simple approach. So in order for us to correctly train this behavior into the dog, you need to understand the fundamental principle of dog training, and that is make good things good and bad things bad. Now this is something that rolls off the tongue, but a lot of people really struggle with the nuts and the bolts of what saying this actually means. It means that we need to reinforce and reward good behaviors, and we need to pressure and make it unpleasant to perform undesirable or bad behaviors. Loose leash walking is probably one of the most simple behaviors to correctly train and probably one of the fastest. And yet it still remains to this day something that I see people struggle with on a regular basis, despite months, if not years of training. As with any job, when you are training your dog, it is important to be using the correct tools for the goal that you are attempting to accomplish. So for loose leash walking, the Fundamental tools that we like to start with are, number one, the prong collar, or sometimes also known as the pinch collar. We like Herm Sprenger. Herm Sprenger is a German brand, and they make the best prong collars available on the market. You can order them on Amazon um, if you can't find an online retailer that sells them. The other tool, needless to say, will be the leash, a six foot leash, is preferable when you are training this behavior. Um, I don't like super short laces. I do not suggest you do this with a flexi leash or a leash any longer than six feet. You need a solid six foot leash, no flex, so none of those bungee leashes, just either a leather or nylon leash is all that you need. The last and also necessary tool for training this behavior are treats. So whatever it is that your dog likes, Make sure that you have plenty of that on your person. I like to keep them in my pockets. When we are training this behavior, we are also going to be using a marker that indicates to the dog when he is performing the correct behavior. I go over marker training in depth in another video, which we will link above. However, it's important to know if you didn't watch that video that our marker for food, which basically replaces a clicker, is the sound chip. So every time I say chip, my dogs are going to understand that they are receiving a piece of food. And it's going to allow me to identify for the dog and isolate the correct behavior that I'm looking for. When you are training loose leash walking, there are two fundamental components to this behavior that your dog needs to understand. Number one, no tension on the leash. A lot of dogs are really comfortable making constant tension on the leash. And a lot of owners, unfortunately, are also really comfortable with this because they've just grown so used to always having a dog that creates tension on the leash. So the first thing that we need to teach the dogs is do not pull in any capacity. Whether we are standing still or whether we are moving, there should never be any tension on the leash. 
The second thing that is important and essential for your dog to understand is when we say your name, you must immediately turn and move towards us, whether you are on the end of the leash or whether you are in a slack, whether you, the dog is on a slack leash. So if I say my dog's name, Fido, I expect that dog to turn around and move towards me. And if he doesn't turn around and move towards me, I'm gonna immediately apply pressure to him until he performs the correct behavior. Okay guys, so now we're gonna show you how to properly put a prong collar on. There are many YouTube videos on this, so I'm not gonna to waste too much time on it, but uh, one of our trainers here, Tall Guy, say hi Tall Guy, hey. is going to show you with his Malinois how to correctly put on the prong collar. Pixie, come cut, sit. So if you look here, sit. The prong collar does not slip over the dog's head. The prong collar is put around the dog's neck and put together. Tall guy, why don't you take that prong collar off? So he's gonna pop that prong collar apart. As you can see, why don't you put it together without it being on the dog very briefly? So you put one prong in one hole, the other one in the other, squeeze them together and you pop it in. Now to take it out, that's how it comes apart, that's how it goes together. Why don't you put that back on Pixie? Now, correctly fitted prong collar sits high on the dog's neck. It does not sit low and it does not sit loose. That, this collar here is correctly fitted. As you can see, it can move a little bit on the dog's neck, but it's not excessively loose. So once you have your prong collar fitted correctly on your dog, you are going to be putting a leash on what we call the live ring of the prong collar. If you look carefully, you'll see two chains on the back of the collar. The live ring is the ring that sits on top of the other ring that is below it. So the live ring is always on top. If you look carefully, the chains are in no way twisted and it smoothly functions back and forth. When you pull tight, it creates a slight pinching sensation. When you loosen up, the dog doesn't really feel anything at all. If the collar is too loose, you can take some prongs out of your collar in order for it to fit properly. If you are still struggling with taking it on and off the dog, I suggest you practice on your thigh or on your arm until you get the hang of it. Now the prong collar is a tool that is often vilified by people that don't really know any better. The reason why we use the prong collar in training is because it is a very effective tool of communication. With just a small amount of pressure on the leash, you are able to get a very clear message across to the dog. You can use it as a negative reinforcer to teach behavior, and you can also use it as a punisher to remove undesirable behavior. Suffice to say, when used properly, there are very few tools as effective and easy to use as the prong collar. And as you can see, when a dog is correctly trained with this device, they have no issue wearing it whatsoever. Okay guys, so before we actually get into demonstrating on a dog, I'm gonna show you on this post how to correctly use your leash and prong to elicit the behavior that you want when it comes to loose leash walking. So the big mistake a lot of people make when using the prong collar, or really any collar, is they constantly allow this. Okay? Now in the beginning, if you have a very physically sensitive dog, when they make that pressure on the collar, they're on their own, they're probably going to immediately let off the pressure on the leash. However, over time, most dogs actually become quite used to the prong collar and actually very comfortable in it, and they end up pulling on the prong collar all the time, and you always see people walking around with their dog on a prong collar and the leash like this, especially when the dog becomes aroused by something. So right from the get-go, remember, the prong collar is not a band-aid solution. It is a training tool that is allowing you to reach a specific goal. So in the beginning, if my dog has never worn a prong collar, I am going to put a prong collar on the dog and I'm going to ease the dog around the room or if I'm using my backyard, training in my backyard, I'm gonna ease the dog around the yard and just make gentle pressure on the collar and when he moves towards the pressure, which is obviously towards me, I'm going to immediately release the pressure and praise the dog. Good! 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 Good boy! Dizzy. Good. 
good. Good boy. Good boy, yeah. Once your dog is acclimated to the prong collar, and it really doesn't take any time at all, remember the principle making the bad behavior unpleasant for the dog and making the good behavior pleasant. Well, we're going to apply this to loose leash walking. Now, a lot of people ask me, what do I say? How do I tell my dog what to do? Well, you can't tell your dog what to do because dogs are non-verbal communicators. If you watch dogs with one another, they communicate non-verbally. Loose leash walking is no different. There is no command for loose leash walking. For us, when we train, it is an expectation at all times that the dog maintain a loose and slack leash. So we're gonna show the dog right from the get-go. Anytime the dog makes pressure on the leash, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring our hand forward slightly and we're going to pop back on the leash, okay? So every time he pulls, I'm not gonna pull back. I'm going to bring my hand forward, create some slack, and quickly pop back on the leash. Now, dogs vary greatly in their sensitivity level. So of course, in the beginning, you're going to go very easy on the dog, and you're gonna see where the dog's sensitivity level is. If the dog reacts very suddenly to this light pop, then of course, this is where you're going to stay in order to achieve what it is that we're looking to achieve. However, if your dog doesn't react, if you pop your dog and it just kind of rolls off him like he's the Terminator and he doesn't change his behavior in any way and he doesn't show any reaction, then you're going to increase the pressure that you use on your next pop. Okay, so different dogs are very different. We have some dogs that require a full arm pop and we have some dogs that work just off a little wrist, wrist pop. You have to work within the sensitivity level of your dog. So, really important, do not allow any of this and do not do any pulling. Pulling is not how you teach a dog to stop doing something. You need to create an undesirable effect that is very clearly paired with the undesirable behavior. So the undesirable behavior is this, okay? It's not this. So if your dog's doing this and you think he or she might pull, but it, he or she hasn't actually pulled, do not pop the leash preemptively. Wait until the dog actually pulls, Loosen up on the leash and deliver a quick snap. Also, a lot of mistakes that, uh, one of the most common mistakes that people make is they pop and then they maintain this pressure. And again, this is only going to stress the dog out needlessly and confuse the dog. Because remember, we only want to pressure bad behavior. Normally, with most dogs, if you do this, they're gonna ease up on the leash, even if it's just for a couple of seconds. And that allows the dog to show, that, that allows the dog to see, hey, when I'm not pulling, there's no unpleasant popping happening here. And that's when your dog starts to really understand, this is bad, this is good. So whenever my dog makes that pressure, quick pop, and then we're gonna go back to loose, loose leash. Now, if he pulls again, all I'm gonna do, and if he pulls again, all I'm gonna do, and very quickly I'm gonna show him, anytime you pull, that pop happens. So, clear communication, guys. Don't preempt the dog and don't do any pulling. Do popping, okay? Popping is what is effective. It's kind of like you're snapping the leash. All right, it's the same thing if I'm calling my dog to me. So if I say, if I have a dog named Fido and I say Fido and Fido ignores me because he's sniffing the daisies, then I'm gonna say Fido. Pop, 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 pop. And when he turns around and takes that step towards me, I'm gonna praise him. Good boy. I'm going to move away from him and remember my mark. I'm going to give him some dog treats to reinforce the act of coming towards me. Jaxie. Good. So when I call him, Fido, move away and give him food. Number one, I say your name. If you ignore your name, things become unpleasant, okay? You react to your name, you turn towards me, you offer the desirable behavior, I praise you, good boy, and you get a second pleasant thing, which is obviously some nice treats that you like to eat. If your dog is not food motivated, simply praise and pet your dog when your dog moves towards you. 
Okay guys, so let's introduce the two dogs that we're going to be using in this video. This is Jax, and Jax is your typical Burmese mountain dog, happy-go-lucky, young guy, likes to pull, no respect for the leash, very excited about meeting other dogs. This is Chance, Chance is a young German Shepherd, and again, very hyper when he sees other dogs, and just generally quite a chore to walk with how he behaves on the leash and how big he is. You are going to be seeing us resolve this issue with both these dogs. This is all happening on the same day, by the way. So there is no delay between what you see now and what you're going to shortly see. So here we go with Jax. Jax is on the prong collar now. Quick little pop there, and you see immediately he's like, oh, what was that? Now you'll see I stop again, and he's like, oh, okay. I get this a little bit. I'm, I need to respect this leash a little bit. And again, right? And it's it's not that he sees me. It's just that he feels the leash, the pressure in the leash change, and he immediately notices and respects it. Here you're going to see he blows it off and pop. There you go. So now he's really kind of in tune with me. On this next rep, I'm actually going to reward him because he's showing me such a nice behavior, so in tune. You know, he's still happy, but now he's really thinking about me. Look at this behavior on the leash. This is exactly what we want to see, a very loose leash. You can hold it with one finger, and the dog is showing the correct behavior. So now we're going to do some recalls. So I call him Jax, and that time he just came to me, but he got really excited. He jumped on me. Here he tries to jump again. I say, ah, and I give him a little pop on the leash. Here I call him. He didn't come, so you see me do the little pop, pop, and then I, again I reward him. So just doing a couple of recalls around another dog, um, it's a really big part of loose leash walking. There you go. You see we do a pass on another dog, and he wants to jump on her. Right away, pop, pop. Now look at this next pass. Even while this dog is barking, you know, he kind of faded behind me a little bit, but he definitely didn't go for her, which is what we want. And as you see, every pass, you know, it becomes a little bit better. Here he's actually jumping more on me because he is excited, but he knows he can't pull. There he kind of wanted to look back at her and then, this is obviously a really difficult situation for him, but he's still really, for the most part, maintaining a, a zero pressure on the leash, which is what we want to see. The jumping will fade as he gets more and more used to just kind of being calm and not pulling and jumping on, on that dog. Look, here he wants to go see the other trainer, but he knows I cannot pull that leash. So he does a little bit of a hop hop, but he stays next to me, which is what I want. And again, he didn't really have to stay next to me. He just can't pull on the leash. That's the really important thing. A lot of dogs like to bust through the door, especially dogs that are out of control and used to pulling on the leash. So it's really important to understand that right when we start going through doors in the beginning, I start teaching the dog that he can't just go through doors. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to automatically pop him back when he tries to go through the door. I'm not going to ask him to sit. I just don't want him to burst through the threshold without my permission. Okay. When I give him permission, he can come in. Come on, buddy. And we're gonna do that again. If he tries to go through that door, I'm just gonna give him a pop. Come on, Jaxie. Ah. Good. Ah. Good. Good job. Okay. There is no use saying to the dog, no, you have to wait for me, wait, wait, stay, stay, sit, sit. A lot of people do this unnecessary talking. Remember, dogs are nonverbal. I need to show them with pressure on, pressure off, what it is that I want them to do. I don't want you to go through that door right away. Doors open doesn't mean you can go through it, whether we're going in or coming out. Okay, look at that. We've already got a change in the dog's behavior. He's waiting to hear from me before he goes through. He's He's kind of coming out of his own little world, and he's kind of coming into my world a little bit, which is what we want. By the end of this process, he's going to be completely in my world, and he's going to be very responsive to everything that I ask him to do. Jaxie, come on, buddy. Good boy. So don't waste your time talking to the dog. Show your dog what it is that you want with meaningful pressure. Pressure the dog understands. This is unpleasant. This is pleasant. So... Chance here is case in point of what I'm talking about with a less sensitive dog. Jax, who you saw earlier, is a little bit more sensitive than Chance is. So Chance doesn't notice the prong collar pressure as much and it doesn't particularly bother him. So he's the kind of dog who you're going to need to make a little bit more of a firm pop in order to get the message across that pulling is a undesirable behavior. So I'm going to introduce Chance to this concept. Why don't you guys follow me and we'll get into it.
Good boy. Not very food motivated, but he likes praise, so we're going to do a lot of praise with this dog. It's quite possible that as he stays here a little bit longer, this is only his second day here, it's quite possible that he's going to become significantly more food motivated as the uh, weeks progress. Okay guys, so here you see me get back into doing some loose leash walking on the driveway. Again, he's a much more stubborn dog than Jax is. You see he's willing to risk the leash pop a lot more. So this is an excellent example of the kind of dog. Good boy there. You can see after two pops there, he was like, okay, yeah, I, I remember what I'm supposed to be doing here. This is the kind of dog that um, as he progresses, we're probably going to have to be a little bit firmer with our corrections, especially when we get to the portion where we have to take him in public, um, you know, around strange dogs and people. But you know, he's already showing the comprehension that we want to see. Again, it's important to remember this is the first day of training. You see he sees that dog and he just heads right for her. And um, I also do a recall here. With this dog, I do a lot of recalls in close proximity to other dogs. I want him to understand that when he hears his name, he must leave whatever it is he's heading to and move towards me. Again, he's not food motivated at this time. So um, I'm just using praise and... I've, this is the first day I've handled him, so we don't really have much of a relationship. But you can see he's a happy-go-lucky guy, and he's happy to accept my praise. When he does get to the point where he is food-motivated or toy-motivated, you'll see his motivation to please me go right up um, well, significantly from where it is now. So again, a lot of you see I approach dogs, and then I just back off and call his name. I'm not just backing off and popping him. I am calling his name. Good, there. You see that time? I didn't have to pop him. So you see, after a few repetitions, now look at that. The dog is breaking off on his own and making the good decision. So we're doing regular passes. As you can see, he still shows some interest. He does this thing where he feeds behind me. A lot of dogs will do that in the beginning when they realize they can't lunge. They'll kind of try and feed behind me. And I just give him a couple little pops to keep him moving. I don't let him turn around and look too much. I don't mind if the dog glances at the other dog. It's when they really start getting super intense with their staring or they actually take a, a significant step towards a dog that um, you know I will correct the dog so here I'm actually making it much more difficult I'm actually right next to a uh, tall guy and he's playing tug with his Malinois pixie and you can see it's really exciting so there you go I call him off that and again of course he's not able to do it but I'm showing him right from day one this is the expectation you hear your name 180 no matter what's going on you head towards daddy at the same time also you must not pull so he is doing a good job in that he's not pulling on the leash but he is still very of course excited and intense about watching pixie do her uh, work with tall guy there there's a good pass right there just a little pop to remind him to keep on moving okay guys so as you can see training this is actually quite simple and it really resolves actually a lot of behavioral issues that people have, not just pulling. A lot of dog reactivity is directly linked to pulling. So the dog will actually pull and then become reactive towards other dogs and people. A lot of jumping and other undesirable behaviors that people struggle with is directly linked to pulling. So if you demand from your dog that the leash always be loose and that he listen when you call him, then you are going to see that a lot of these behaviors that you have are actually going to be removed. You'll also notice that when the dog becomes excited by something that he sees in the distance, he already goes to pull right away. And immediately when I correct him for that behavior, you immediately see the excitement level of the dog come down significantly. A lot of behavioral problems are caused by arousal. So the less arousal your dog has in the presence of things that he or she becomes quite reactive or excited by, the less problems that you're actually going to have with any of the undesirable behaviors we just talked about. It's important to understand how using both your dog's name to recall him or her and also teaching your dog to keep the leash slack by delivering those well-timed pops is going to work together to really make your walk 
a much more pleasant experience for both you and your dog. Number one, when we are walking, as we already discussed, anytime the dog makes pressure on that leash, I'm going to release that pressure and deliver a pop in the opposite direction to remove the behavior. Number two, if we're walking, let's pretend that there was something on the ground within reach of the dog's leash. So let's pretend I was walking and there was a piece of garbage right here and the dog could actually reach it without pulling on the leash. What am I going to do? Am I just going to preemptively pop the dog? That's one option, but I think using the dog's name to call the dog off the item, person, or animal that he or she is headed towards is actually a more fair approach. So if we're walking and there's a piece of litter on the ground that the dog heads towards, I'm going to say his name, Chance. And then if he ignores me, I'm going to deliver those pops to get him off the object. When he comes off of it, I'm going to praise him. Same thing if I'm passing somebody and it's a really narrow sidewalk, we're walking past one another, I say his name, if he ignores me, pop, pop. When he moves towards me, praise him. We're just going to keep on going past whatever it is that he wanted to go to in the first place. If I'm walking and Chance is out in front of me, remember, this is loose leash walking. I don't care if the dog's in front of me, behind me, beside me, as long as he's not pulling on the leash. If he's in front of me and I want to double back, I can't just turn around and crack him on the leash. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say his name, Chance. And then I'm going to turn around. And if he doesn't turn with me, pop, pop. And you're going to see using both the leash technique that we showed you and also using your dog's name, not frivolously, but in very specific situations like the ones we talked about, the walk is going to become way more easy and pleasant for you and your dog. And you're going to see a drastic improvement in your dog's behavior. I can't stress this enough. Don't be doing this walking. And every time your dog pulls chance, 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 we're not going to be doing that. You only use his name when you need him to move towards you. If he pulls on his own, that's his own problem. If I'm walking past somebody and he just yanks me towards that person, right away, that's an automatic pop. If I'm standing here, he smells something over there and he takes off that way, that's going to be an automatic pop. And I'm going to make it real clear for him, whether I'm standing still, whether I'm moving, you cannot pull this leash. And if I say your name, move towards me. Chance, a boy. If you found this video helpful, Feel free to like and subscribe to our channel and follow us for more training tips.